Next up, we'll dive into our first four array methods. Now there are more to come as you can see here, but these first four are grouped together for a reason. They're really commonly used and they all have to do with either adding content or removing content or elements from an array. So adding to the end, removing from the end, removing from the start, adding to the start, these are really common operations. Before we take a look at them, if you go to the documentation on MDN for array, under JavaScript reference array, on the left hand side, you can see that there's a really long list of methods. Just like with strings, every array comes with a bunch of built-in actions. And if you have questions about any of them, you can click and read to learn more. So let's say we wanted to start with push. That's a good place to start. This tells us push method adds, or the push method adds one or more elements to the end of an array. Okay, and you can see an example. Here we have some elements in an array. If we push the value cows, now the array has cows at the end. So we're gonna play around with these four methods, push, pull, oh my God, push, pop, shift, and unshift. The array we'll use is called top songs. It has four songs so far. Notice that uh, I, I spread it out onto different lines, totally valid and a much nicer choice when you have a lot of content or long lines. It's really hard to understand or to read if it's all in one super massive line. So this works. And let's say I wanna add something into the end. We saw how we could add to the end using the length. So top songs and then square brackets, top songs dot length. That works, it's just kind of annoying. We can instead use push. So top songs dot push is going to push a song or whatever we add in, it could be a, a number. It's going to push it to the very end of the array. So top songs dot push, and let's go with uh, fortunate son. Okay, refresh the page, and we now have top songs where fortunate son is at the end. We now have five items. We had four before, now we have five. If we pushed again, top songs dot push, this time I'll just push true. It doesn't make sense, but I'll do it. Notice what it's returning to me. It's giving me a value back. And that value is six. That value is the new length of the array. So it changes the array. If we look at top songs, there is true at the end, but in the process, it also returns to us the new value. We'll learn a lot more about return values and how we can return our own values in functions later on. But it's important to understand that that is what's happening here. Unlike with string methods, where if we had a string, we wanted to uppercase it, we weren't actually changing the original string. As we've seen, strings are not mutable, they are immutable. So if we had let str equals hello, and we call str.to uppercase, it returns the uppercase version, and we have to capture it in a variable if we want the new version, the uppercase version, because string is still unchanged. With an array, when you push, you're actually changing, you are mutating the array itself. And so it returns something else. In this case, it returns the number or the length for how many items are in there. Okay, so that's pushing. Push goes on to the end. We also have pop. Pop will take a value from the end. So I'm gonna clear my console here. We have top songs. I put that true on the end. That seems stupid. So let's remove it. Top songs dot pop. Pop is going to always remove the last item and it returns its value to you. So this is useful, the fact that it returns it to you. If you were creating a list uh, that was managing your to-dos and you always wanted to get the last to-do on that list in order to do something with it, you could pop it off and then you would have that value returned to you so you could store it in a variable. So I could do top songs dot pop. This is going to give me a song this time true is gone, so it will give me fortunate son. So we could go with const next song equals top songs dot pop. And if we look at next song, it has fortunate son. If we look at top songs, it does not have fortunate son anymore. Now, as far as popping it and calling it next song, we would be playing through these songs backwards if we were popping each time, which is fine. Maybe we have the list reversed, but you probably would be playing songs from the beginning. But also when you pop something off, it's gone. 
So it's more applicable to the first example I gave of a to-do list where you pop something off, you do it, and you don't need it anymore. If this was actually a playlist, we don't want to remove that song. We don't want it to be gone from the list. We just want to play it. So that's push and pop. We can pop as many times as we want. Now if we keep popping, so I'll do top songs dot pop over and over and over until we have nothing left. It returns undefined and our array is just going to be completely empty. So push and pop, I think are relatively easy to remember. You push, you're forcing something into the end. You're pushing it in. Pop, you're popping from the end. Now maybe it just makes sense to me, but I have a much easier time remembering these two, push and pop, than I do the next two. We'll talk about shift and unshift. I always mix them up, even five, six, seven years later. Still drives me crazy. But we're only focusing on push and pop for now. Again, push, add something to the end. You pass in a value to be added, and it will add to the end and return the new length. Pop does the opposite. You don't specify a value. You just call it with empty parentheses. It does the same thing every time. It takes the last item out of the array. It's not just getting you the value. It is removing it and then returning it.